Dear friends, good Shabbos to you all, and Mazel Tov to the Connor family as Grace celebrates becoming Bat Mitzvah this weekend. Special Shabbos wishes to those who join us on the Bima this evening, Mayor Michael Bloomberg, Rabbi David Ellenson, and President of the Congregation, John Stryker. This evening, as a congregation, we express our best and sincerest wishes to our dear colleague and mentor, Rabbi David Posner as we celebrate his 40th year at Temple Emmanuel. Mazel Tov to Sylvia and the entire Posner family. I welcome our president, John Stryker, to the pulpit. I also would like to welcome everyone to the main sanctuary for this very special Friday night service. Uh, Rabbi David Posner, a member of the Temple Emmanuel clergy for 40 years, will become Rabbi Emeritus in May next year. As Rabbi Posner put it, if 40 years was good enough for Moses, it's good enough for him. <laughs> Over his 40 years of service, every family in this congregation has had some interaction with Rabbi Posner. Whether it was a life event, a need for help or counsel, or simply the instruction and illumination of his sermons, Rabbi Posner has touched us all. In my family, all four of our children attended religious school under his supervision. He has been with us for bar and bat mitzvahs. Three weeks ago, he officiated at the wedding of our daughter. And 10 years before that, he officiated at the wedding of that daughter's older sister. That earlier marriage has already resulted in three grandchildren so far, so I can attest he has done a very good job. Um, each of us knows Rabbi Posner in a different way and over the course of the coming year, there will be many events celebrating his career at Emmanuel. So let's start with this first one. Many times an introduction is prefaced with, this man needs no introduction. Well, Mayor Bloomberg is probably as good as it gets in that category. So no introduction today, but I would like to tell him what he surely knows. We are all profoundly proud to have him as a member of our congregation. Our community, our city, and our country have benefited and continue to benefit from his governance and leadership. Mayor Bloomberg. John, thank you, and uh, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Uh, I want to start out by uh, thanking our honorable guests, Cardinal Dolan and Cardinal Egan, for joining us. Uh, your eminences, uh, your being here tonight is, as we say in Latin, a mitzvah. Um, welcome to my humble corner shul. I also want to say how happy I am to take part in the celebration of Rabbi Posen's 40 years of service to his congregation, his faith, and to his city. I'm happy because while this occasion means I will no longer see our magnificent leader in his current role, it also means I will no longer have to deal with his relentless fundraising Yes, history of the Jews, it's a long history. When it comes to fundraising, Rabbi Posner's approach is effective, but it is not exactly subtle. 
<laughs> First, he casually mentions something to you in a conversation. Then by the time you get home, you'll have three emails from him on the topic. The next day, your assistant will get a phone call from him. Then by the time he or she gets home, he or she will have three emails. Eventually, I learned it was much easier to just say yes right away. Seriously, people give to David so willingly because he is doing great things for his congregation and for our city. Uh, when he was hired, you should know he was the youngest rabbi in the temple's long storied history, and in over four decades, he became nothing less than a civic conscience for our city, a leader on interfaith issues and an example to religious leaders everywhere. And as the congregation grew, he never stopped tending to it with his personal and loving care. And somehow, he also always found time to teach, to lecture, to fundraise, and even to practice the piano for two hours every day. Now, as someone who takes Spanish lessons every day, I can only hope that his piano was a little more finely tuned than my Spanish. <laughs> Throughout it all, David has been a trusted advisor and a true friend to an enormous number of New Yorkers. New York family shepherding them through the most important events of their lives, including my life. He officiated at my wedding. But of course, even with his boundless dedication and affection for all of us, there is no one more committed, no one who makes, who cavells more than he does about his family. His beloved Syl, his kids Rachel and Rafe and their spouses, and of course the grandchildren. Family has always meant everything to David Posner and it has meant everything to his family as well, and that includes the Emanuel family. But now the time has come. If our ancestors could finally get out of the desert after wandering for 40 years, then maybe that is the right time, length of time to get away from Fifth Avenue once in a while. But David, whatever you do in your new role, whatever you choose to do for the next 40 years, whether it is spending more quality time with your beautiful family, leading a new civic cause, or starring in the off-Broadway play, Old Jews Telling Jokes, <laughs> I know it will be a positive, productful, and meaningful contribution. I'm glad you're going to stay close by. We need you and your leadership and your wisdom as much as ever. Please keep in touch. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you but just one email is fine, not three. I promise I will get back to you. Thank you, everyone, and God bless. Our service continues on page four. O oh God, we have entered thy sanctuary on this Sabbath to hallow thy name and to offer unto thee prayers of thanksgiving. The week of toil is ended, the day of rest has come. Thou, creator of all, hast given us the blessing of labor so that by our work we may fashion things of use and beauty. May the fruit of our labor be acceptable unto thee. May each new Sabbath find us going from strength to strength so that by thy grace we may be helped to even worthier work. Make us conscious of our obligation to thee and of the opportunities for service which thou hast put within our reach. Help us to use our powers for the benefit of others, so that the hearts of thy children may be gladdened by the work of our hands. I rejoiced when they said unto me, Let us go unto the house of the Lord. It hath been told thee, O man, what is good, and what the Lord doth require of thee. Only to do justice, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously, brother against brother? Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Let justice well up as waters, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord God of hosts shall be with us.
We pray together. Thou art our God, the source whence life and all its blessings flow. Wherever we turn our gaze, we behold signs of thy goodness and grace. The fullness of thy power is disclosed to us in thy gracious dealings with Israel, in thy constant shaping of human destiny, and in the marvelous works of thy creation. The whole universe proclaims thy glory. Thy loving spirit hovers over all thy works, guiding and sustaining them. The harmony and grandeur of nature speak to us of thee, our God, of thine infinite might and majesty. We rise and say together, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. We pray together. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt speak of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, thou shalt find them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that ye may remember and do all thy commandments, and be holy unto your God. Trust in God with all thy heart, and lean not upon thine own understanding. For he is our God, and we are his people, consecrated to his service. Remember all God's commandments and do them, that ye go not about after your own heart and your own eyes. It is he who redeemed us from the hand of oppressors, and we our spirits when our own strength fails us. God's works and wonders surpass our understanding. His gifts and blessings are without number. We rejoice in his sovereign power,
Ata Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avotenu, Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Velohe Yaakov, Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim Vekone Hakol, Bezocher Chaste Avot, Ume Vigu Ulaliv Nevenehem, Leman Shemo Beahava, Melacho Zeru Moshia Magain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham. Praise be thou, O Lord, God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, great, mighty, and exalted. Thou bestowest loving kindness upon all thy children. Thou rememberest the devotion of our ancestors. In thy love thou bringest redemption to their descendants for the sake of thy name. Thou art our King and helper, our Savior and protector. Praise be thou, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Eternal is thy power, O Lord. Thou art mighty to save. In loving kindness thou sustainest the living. In the multitude of thy mercies thou preservest all. Thou upholdest the fallen and healest the sick, freest the captives and keepest faith with thy children in death as in life. Who is like unto thee, Almighty God, author of life and death, source of salvation? Praise be thou, O Lord, who hast implanted within us eternal life. May the rest and quiet of this hour of worship Refresh our inner life and renew in us the sense of thy holy presence. Open our eyes that we behold truth and beauty in the words of the inspired teachers of thy will. Animate our thoughts and endeavors with the power of thy divine purposes, so that whatever our hand findeth to do, we may do with all our might. Fill our hearts with Sabbath peace and serenity, that we may hear the voice of thy spirit and be moved to build our lives on the abiding foundations of thy law. We pray for the masters and teachers in Israel, that they may dispense thy truth with earnestness and zeal, yet not without charity. May the law of love be found on their lips, and may they, by precept and example, lead many in the ways of righteousness. Bless, O oh God, all endeavors wherever they to lift up the fallen, to redeem the sinful, to bring back those who wander from the right path and restore them to a worthy life. Endow us with purity of heart and steadfastness of spirit, that our lives may testify of thee and sanctify thy name. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Amen. We pray silently.
I now have uh, two more introductions to make. Uh, the first is to reintroduce you, the Emanuel congregants, to yourselves. It's been a remarkable week, and sometimes great tragedy can bring out the best in people. For all the grief and hardship brought by the recent storms, the responding outpouring of support from the members of this congregation to the storm's victims was remarkable. The Tikkun Olam Committee, led by Trustees Linda DeLott and Elise Newhouse, put out a call to our membership with an email alert and a posting on our website asking for donated clothing and supplies. The response from you, our members, was overwhelming. Within hours, there were mounds of goods in the lobby, which were immediately loaded into vans and deployed to the affected areas. Further, large quantities of water, towels, diapers, boots, blankets, soap, toiletries were either purchased by the committee or donated and contributed by the members and immediately sent to Staten Island, the Lower East Side, the Rockaways, Red Hook. And that work goes on. Our religious school students joined the relief efforts by making sandwiches this past Sunday, which were delivered by the Yorkville Common Pantry to those who were displaced due to lack of power. Our philanthropic fund, to which you donate on Yom Kippur, under the prudent leadership of Trustee Bob Kalanoff, had set aside a reserve fund for an unforeseen emergency. That fund was able to quickly and efficiently provide for the purchase of emergency supplies. We were able to support the relief efforts of the reform movement with a $10,000 grant that will be used to help several reform congregations that were damaged or destroyed. And I am pleased to announce that the congregation, again through the philanthropic fund, has made a contribution of $75,000 to the mayor's fund to support the citywide relief efforts. It was a good job. I now would like to introduce Rabbi David Ellenson. As many of you know, Rabbi Ellenson is the president of Hebrew Union College, the seminary of Reform Judaism. Hebrew Union College and Temple Emanuel have a long history dating back to the founding of the college in 1875, when Emanuel took a leadership role in its establishment and subsequent support for the, of the college in its work. There is also a long-standing relationship between Rabbi Ellenson and Rabbi Posner. They have been friends and colleagues with a relationship that goes back to their student days, longer than 40 years. We are honored to have Rabbi Ellenson with us this evening and look forward to his remarks. Shabbat Shalom. This does not exactly look, as Mayor Bloomberg put it, like the little shul on the corner, uh, a little bit larger than that. Uh, it is, though, for me tonight, here in this sanctuary, a great, great honor to speak on behalf of Rabbi Posner's alma mater, the Hebrew Union College, but even more significantly, as a friend of Rabbi David and Sylvia Posner, as we mark his 40 years here in this great congregation, in this great pulpit. As Carol Greenberg and I were talking prior to the service tonight, 40 years, Arba'im Shana, is a lifetime. And yet we know that Rabbi Posner has, during that lifetime, along with Sylvia, engendered such love and devotion from so many of you. But all one has to do tonight is to look at this kahal, this community, as it is assembled here tonight to honor Rabbi Posner, to recognize the influence that he has had. Love is probably the most difficult emotion of all to fully capture. As I said, I speak tonight as the president of Hebrew Union College, the institution that educated and formed Rabbi Posner and prepared him for the rabbinate. But I speak here tonight even more significantly as Rabbi Posner's friend. In Jewish tradition, it says, Asay lecha rav lecha chaver. You should acquire for yourself a rabbi and make for yourself a friend. 
The reality is that Rabbi Posner and his wife Sylvia have been my friends for over four decades. And for over four decades, I have been nourished by them as you have in every way that is conceivable. Rabbi Posner, as the cantor, and Rabbi Ehrlich and Rabbi Seidman noted in their letter tonight, is for all of us a rabbi's rabbi. What is it that we do celebrate here tonight and what does it mean for Rabbi Posner to be celebrated by each and every one of us as our rabbi, Rabbeinu, on this occasion? Within the Sephardic tradition, there are three titles that are given to a rabbi, but each one of them indicates a different dimension of what the essence of the rabbi's task is. And Rabbi Posner, for four decades, has fulfilled that essence as rabbi of Congregation Emmanuel. A rabbi is to be a Marbitz Torah. A rabbi is to be a teacher and a lover of Torah. David Posner is learned everything from Aleph to Tuff. From Aramit, Aramaic, to Tuf, Talmud, David Posner is aware of the depths of Jewish religious tradition. He is a Yodea Sefer. He is someone who knows what the books of our tradition says, say, and he is a lover of classical and Jewish languages. David Posner loves the word. He is a master preacher, and he watches, and he examines each word very, very carefully. Because he knows the words, as our tradition put it, have an ethical import. Baruch she'amar v'hayah ha'olam. When God spoke, the world came to be. Through words, community is formed. And thus, Rabbi Posner is a Yodea Sefer, as a Marbitz Torah, as a teacher of Torah, has helped to create community among tens of thousands of us over his decades as service as rabbi of this community. But a rabbi has to also be, as the Sephardic tradition puts it, a chacham. A rabbi needs to be wise. A rabbi needs to know how to take the words of these traditions and apply them in ways that comfort, but also in ways that challenge on issues both personal and public throughout his career. And Rabbi Posner, from this pulpit, from this congregation, has over four decades brought the words and wisdom of Jewish tradition to bear into the personal, the private, but also the public life of this community, this congregation, this city, into your lives in ways that reflect his wisdom and his care. But in the end, a rabbi has to also be, as I mentioned at the very outset in my description of my relationship with Rabbi Posner and Sylvia Posner, a rabbi has to be a chaver. A rabbi has to be a friend. A rabbi has to understand and know the joy, the pain of those whom the rabbi serves. In his officiation, at over 2,000 weddings, at hundreds and hundreds of bar and bat mitzvahs, in times of sadness, at hundreds and hundreds of funerals, Rabbi Posner has been present as a chaver who has brought the comfort and the wisdom of Jewish tradition and even more of his personality to bear on the life of this community of you who sit here tonight and upon this city. To be a chaver in the end means that we celebrate Rabbi Posner for his work as our friend. We celebrate him for his scholarship as a Marbitz Torah. And we celebrate and honor Rabbi Posner for his wisdom as a chacham. In the end, I would offer one Jewish mystical teaching that I think embodies all of these other qualities that Rabbi Posner has displayed throughout his career, because in the end it reflects more than any other single item what it is that marks Rabbi Posner's character 
and what it is that has marked his rabbinate. In Jewish mystical tradition, in the tradition of Lurianic Kabbalah, there is the belief that the world was created in a giant cataclysm. There was an apocalyptic moment in which God withdrew in an act that the Kabbalist labeled seem soon. God withdrew his own divine presence and placed the holiness of his own being into vessels that burst, and with the bursting of these vessels, Shvirata Kalim, the world came to be. The reason why the world is not perfect, according to this Kabbalistic tradition, is that the world itself was created in a cataclysmic moment, that all prior to existence was God, and that with the creation of the world, God's presence is not found in each and every place in the universe. But at the same time, the Kabbalists point out that there are Nitzitzot, there are Nitzitzot Shel Kedushah, there are sparks of holiness that reflect the presence of God amidst all the dross, amidst all the evil, amidst all the brokenness that marks the world in which we live. And the Kabbalists teach that the task of each and every Jew, of each and every human being, is to go out into the world and through the performance of that term that Mayor Bloomberg cited earlier, through the performance of mitzvot, of commandments given to us by God, through the performance of these good deeds, we gather up sparks of holiness and we aid God in the task of tikkun olam. We aid God in the task of repair of the world. Rabbi Posner is our friend, as our sage, as our teacher of Torah, has been engaged throughout his entire life in gathering up sparks of holiness. You have felt these sparks and his ability to gather them in the weddings that he has performed for you, in the naming ceremonies at which he has officiated, in the comfort that he has provided you in the hospital, in the comfort that he has provided you as you engage in Nichum Avelim, the comforting of mourners. In countless, countless places, Rabbi Posner has embodied every hope we have for each and every rabbi and cantor whom we ordain at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. And so on this night, it is not only as president of the College Institute, but as his friend that I salute and celebrate Rabbi Posner on this awesome and holy moment that I say to Rabbi Posner, to Sylvia, with whom I work each and every day to their beautiful children and beautiful grandchildren. May the sparks of holiness that they discover in the world and that they bring to each of us through their work in the community, may those sparks continue to be gathered by them and may all of us, inspired by their example and by his example, help to repair that world which is so desperately in need of the goodness that Rabbi Posner brings. Rabbi Posner has stood on this bima countless, countless Shabbatot and on other occasions, and he has brought God's blessing upon you. And so on this occasion tonight, as Rabbi Posner prepares to address you, I would like for one moment to turn the tables on him and offer him a blessing as he has blessed all of you in so many ways for so many years. And so it is in that spirit of thanksgiving, hoda'ah, and recognition of all that Rabbi Posner has done, and to fulfill, I will confess, an aspiration to be not only his friend, but as it were, the rabbi at, one could say, his own bar mitzvah tonight, at least 52 years later. I would call upon Rabbi Poster to come and join me on the bima as I offer God's blessing upon him.
Yivarechacha, Adonai v'yishmarecha. May God, David, always bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'yichonecha. May God's countenance continue to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and to Sil, to your entire family, to this community which you have shepherded and loved for four decades. Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yaseim lecha shalom. May God's face continue to be lifted up to you. May you continue to be blessed with joy, with love, with peace. May the chesed, the loving kindness that you have bestowed upon us and upon this community, continue to bless you, David. And may God's shame, God's favor, continue to bless you and all whom you love. And may you and Sil and all of your beautiful, beautiful children and family in this community be blessed with shalom and with peace. Amen. Dear friends, it is at this point in the Friday evening service that the clergy traditionally wishes you, the congregants, a good Shabbos. This evening we had the honor and the joy of receiving that wish from our fellow temple member, our beloved mayor, and my dear friend, Michael Bloomberg. We met one another here at Temple Emmanuel in 1976. At that time, his star began making a brilliant and successful rise, while mine made a serene and happy plateau. <laughs> and when the microscope of history will focus its lens on our mayor, it will be recorded that at the time of one of New York's worst challenges and natural disasters, Michael Bloomberg proved himself once again as one of our nation's greatest leaders. And beloved president of Hebrew Union College, Rabbi David El Dr. David Ellenson, I am profoundly grateful for your presence here this Shabbos and that of all of my precious, revered, and esteemed colleagues. When asked what is the most enjoyable and the most fulfilling aspect of the life of a rabbi, I immediately respond, it's the colleagues, all of those here this evening who are ordained and who are leaders of, as we say, their flocks. May the Holy One bless them and all whom they serve. And the second best thing about the rabbinate, it's a temple president such as John, and truly all of the lay leadership with whom I've had the pleasure of serving during these four decades. Each one has been a special and unique joy and inspiration. I won't beat about the bush. I love being a rabbi, now, no doubt about it. But there's a good reason why we Jews refer to the afterlife as the academy on high, the yeshiva shel mala. And I can say it very quickly. I loved my teachers at Hebrew Union College, the yeshiva of the reform movement. I loved those years of study from 1965 until 1973. Being a rabbinic student at Hebrew Union College was for me a paradise. May my teachers, the ones still with us, continue to enjoy good health and length of days. And may those who have gone to the beyond forever rest in everlasting peace. All of us remember special and wonderful moments, such as when we stood under the chuppah as a bride or as a groom, when our children and grandchildren were born. I personally remember the very first time that I set foot in Temple Emmanuel. It was a Shabbos morning, November the 7th, 1964. 48 years ago, virtually to this day, the Shabbos, right after Lyndon Johnson defeated Barry Goldwater. Remember that one? 
That morning, my parents of blessed memory and I made our way from the Brownsville section in Brooklyn to Temple Emanuel to attend the service and to have a meeting with Emanuel's senior rabbi, Dr. Julius Mark of blessed memory. The meeting had been arranged by my family rabbi, Max Schenk, Zichron Oliv Three years prior to that meeting, in August of 1961, on the very day of the funeral of my paternal grandfather, I told my family rabbi that I wanted to study for the rabbinate. I remember everything as though it were yesterday, even exactly where he was sitting in my grandparents' home. And in the twinkling of an eye, he immediately announced and foretold what was going to be my life for the next 12 years. He told me that I would choose Hebrew as my foreign language in high school, a choice which I had already made, and that I would augment four years of high school Hebrew with intensive Hebrew courses during the summers at the Jewish Theological Seminary up at Columbia University, and during high school years as well, fall, winter, and spring. Those were the good old days when I spent as much time on the subway as I did at home, studying, of course, in all places. That ride was an hour and a half each way. And my rabbi told me one more critical thing. He told me that eventually, during my senior year in high school, he would arrange an appointment for me and my parents to meet Dr. Julius Mark, the senior rabbi of the temple. And at that meeting, Dr. Mark would hopefully tell me that Temple Emmanuel was going to give me a scholarship for all eight years of study, undergraduate school at the University of Cincinnati, simultaneous with the Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati, a complete scholarship for tuition, room, and board. Everybody pay careful attention. I'm going back more than 50 years. Fast forward now eight years to 1972. One year before ordination, I was told by the Emmanuel rabbis that it was expected that upon ordination in Cincinnati, I would join the rabbinic staff here at Temple Emmanuel. Ordination took place on June the 3rd, 1973. June the 18th, 1973 was my first day here at Emmanuel. It was a Monday. Ultimately, there were 37 graduates in my ordination class. I believe that I am the only one who has remained in his original pulpit. And so it was that I had three critical epiphanies in my life, and all of them at the same age. At 13, I knew with certainty that I wanted to study for the rabbinate. The second was an academic epiphany. The five teachers I had in my freshman year of high school, really at Meyer Levin Junior High School, each and every one of them inspired me academically in a way that I had never before known and which continued throughout every day of my life. One of them happens to be here. I haven't seen him in many, many years. Dr. Carl Bernstein, Please rise so I can see you. Yes, right there. Thanks for coming, dear Carl. And thanks for everything you did, not only for my class, but for every class you taught for so many years. And there was the third and the most important epiphany. At the same age, I knew that I wanted to marry. Sylvia Smiley. And I can, can assure you that this decision had nothing to do with the fact that she is a giant of the Jewish spirit, which all of us know, which all of us know and are aware of this. 
When I saw Syl for the very first time in junior high school, my immediate reaction had nothing to do with spirituality. <laughs> If you remember everybody what it felt like at the end of the ninth grade, you understand as well. <laughs> I graduated from junior high school, and I had already started my summer courses at the Jewish Theological Seminary. I had a vague idea of where Syl lived. And so one midsummer afternoon after arriving back from the Jewish Theological Seminary, I started combing the streets of East Flatbush in the hope, with the prayer, that I would somehow find her in the neighborhood. And it happened. It was like a miracle. She was sitting on her porch, and I still remember how she called me. She still actually uses the same intonation as then. And then a few minutes later, her mother of blessed memory came walking down the street. I had never met her before. And it was only at that very moment that I learned that Syl's parents had been Holocaust survivors. And beneath Syl's outer appearance and beautiful English diction, that English diction for which she won that ninth grade poetry declamation contest, co contest of which I mentioned a couple of years ago at a Yom Kippur sermon, that it was Yiddish and not English that was her first language, and that she cared passionately about Jewish culture and Jewish history. But first and foremost, she cared for the survival of Judaism and for the Jewish people. May her parents and mine rest in peace. Ultimately, we began our careers the very exact same day. She at Hebrew Union College here in New York, where she is the longest serving member of the staff, and I here at Temple Emmanuel, also the staff elder. Together, we shared the same mission. Fundamentally, we knew that we had to take care of the Jewish people in a post-Holocaust age, plain and simple. Jewish survival was our cause, it was our mission, and it was, and still of course is, our passion. And Syl and I never doubted that Rachi and Rafi always felt exactly the same way. They understood precisely who and what their grandparents were and what they meant to Syl, to Tzipi. And of all days, November the 9th, this happens to be the 74th anniversary of the Kristallnacht pogrom. The Holy One works in very mysterious ways. Now, if there were any fame or personal glory in doing this demanding task, I must confess to you that Sippy and I never felt any such thing. We just knew intuitively that we had to take care of the Jews, singularly and collectively. That was all. To the best of my limited gifts, I hope that I have done this task with one consistency in mind, and that was to let Temple Emmanuel use me. I tried passionately to let the temple use me, and I tried equally and passionately never to use the temple. That was my career, and this was my life. I never sought or even thought of doing anything else. Syl and I knew that we had to take care of the Jewish people. And so back to Hebrew, I'm a Hebrew teacher. There is a Hebrew word, nachas, which comes from the root that means to rest. Nachas is the feeling when you can look back and you can appreciate and remember all of the wonderful things that you have seen and experienced. That's having nachas. And along with it, there is also a phrase in Yiddish, 
Nachas von der Kinder, Nachas from the children. Nachas von der Kinder is that sense of restful ease when you can look back on your children and take a breather and realize the joy and the happiness of seeing them grown and happy and successful. Dearest friends, Syl and I have plenty of nachas from our children, from Rachi and Rafi and Courtney and Lionel, and now the next generation, Chase and Simon. And we have even more. We also have nachas from the congregants, that joy that you have given us, that you have allowed us to enter your homes and to enter into your hearts and your lives. Zippy and I actually have nachas from Temple Emmanuel and nachas from you, our congregants, our friends, our Temple family. Thank you all for letting Zippy and me shepherd you all these wonderful years. Shabbat Shalom, Umivarach. Rabbi Posner says that you can't go wrong with a mitzvah, and in that spirit, please be sure to stop by the stage in Wise Hall and select a winter wish in anticipation of mitzvah day. Hurricane relief, as you know, is an ongoing effort. For up-to-date tikkun olam information and ways you can continue to help, please check our website daily, emmanuelnyc.org. And special thanks to Linda DeLott and Carol Greenberg and Elise Newhouse for their extraordinary efforts and devotion to make this evening so memorable. Our gratitude also to our special guests, Dr. Ellenson, Mayor Bloomberg, and our Temple President, John Stryker. And above all, our love to you, dear David, for your unfailing support, your guidance, your friendship, and for the ways, the many ways, you have always put the pintle yid, each one of us, before all else. Yashar Koach to you, to Tzipi, to your beautiful family. Temple Emmanuel is a house of prayer for all people and all who would worship here with us in peace will always be most welcome. Shabbat Shalom, Umevorach. We continue with Kiddush on page 20. Let us praise God with this symbol of joy and thank him for the blessings of the past week, for life and strength, for home and love and friendship, for the discipline of our trials and temptations, for the happiness that has come to us out of our labors. Thou hast ennobled us, O God, by the blessings of work, and in love has sanctified us by Sabbath rest and worship as ordained in the Torah. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath, to be hallowed unto the Lord thy God.
May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you.